Kills us Alexander. McCollum staying with him. Spins, gets inside. Left handed off the glass. Oh, what a sweet move. Giddy, tough spot. Back door. What a pass. What a play. And Jada picks the pocket of Trey Young. He'll take it himself. This is Luke Hart. You're listening to the Uncontested. What is up, everybody? Welcome to the Uncontested Weekly Show, part of the Blue Wire Podcast Network and proudly sponsored by Dave's Hot Chicken and Spark OKC. I'm your host on this Wednesday evening, J.D. Silva, joined by a couple of fellas. The first one being Jacob Niffin. What's up? The second one being Taylor Peterson. Silva, rumor has it you have a craving for some uh, mucho nachitos from Taco oh. Bueno. That's quickly... That's next in line for the most hated commercial for me is the Taco Bueno one. <laughs> that and the um, the Riverwind Spirit oh, commercial yeah. song's always stuck in my head. I've been muting. I just mute my TV between uh, in during commercials now. I can't handle it. It's the only thing you can do, really. Yeah. Do yeah. We'll here's the question: Do you think Bally Sports saw all the cyberbullying we were doing to Laney <laughs> Wilson and decided to pull the commercial? On the I don't think so. It's because uh, I, I forget this guy's name. I actually just looked it up. But whoever's oh, been the other playing, guy is concert yeah, center. It's because it's coming up quick. And then once that one's over, we're right back to Laney. Oh, oh you're hey. return for Laney. We don't have very many games on Bally left. It's a good point. Playoff then games. Where's will... Laney gonna go? Where's that commercial gonna go? Probably on hopefully the into the uh, the clouds and never hopefully be seen again. The clouds. Hopefully. <laughs> Down into the abyss. Hey, Lainey, I, I've, we've gotten a little bit of pushback here because Lainey is a very beautiful woman. Uh, but man, those songs get old quick. <laughs> you God yourself. Work. I'm turning that commercial off. <laughs> hey, sit down. Biombo says we need a commercial that. Oh, hold on right here. Uh, the BC Clark anniversary sale. Oh, just, yeah. just jam that bitch year round. <laughs> hey, open invite. If BC Clark wants to sponsor the podcast, I'll sing the jingle on the show every episode. Boom. Please. For a small fee. Also, uh, maybe a hot take. You know that other commercial? We're already derailed from this podcast only three minutes in. But you know the uh, the other concert commercial that's on right now? The guy doing the doing the promo. <laughs> the guy doing the promo is doing like the Sunday, Sunday, Sunday voice. I think we just need to retire that voice. We don't need that anymore. No, what they? How are we this far off topic on this podcast already? Oh. <laughs> we, they need to get Watch the game. Th- Thunder one by forty. So, this is a, a comment for all the Oklahomies who have been around since the nineties. We need to get the guy that used to do the uh, the Lazy E Arena commercials on one hundred point five <laughs> The Cat. <laughs> um, the Lazy E Arena guy. <laughs> Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Uh, you'll pay for the whole seat but you <laughs> only need the edge <laughs> they can just put up a tweet grave digger <laughs> instead of any of this just I, you can just put up a tweet for me and my eyes will glaze over and I'll read it and move on a tweet for 20 seconds <laughs> all I need for ads all right let's talk about basketball uh, but before we do that be sure to subscribe to us wherever you get your podcast leave us a five star rating <laughs> If you have not done so already, find us on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, etc. Hey, you can also, find us. At, go, go. You can find us at Spark OKC. Hey, yeah. Yeah. Sunday, <laughs> Sunday, Sunday. <laughs> Full circle. See, we're very good at this. We always reel us back in. That's a pro. Yes. Hey, the show at Spark on Sunday after the Dallas game. We were going to go live immediately following the game. We're going to have all the podcast equipment set up. We're going to be hanging out there. So if you're at the game, come by, say what's up. Excuse me. Um, grab yourself a Spark Burger, some pink fries. Uh, we're ha- what's the drink that's going to be on special that night? I'm looking it up because I want to know. Frozen Club Special, I believe. Yeah. Something like that. It's, it's Thunder Colors. Frozen It'll be Thunder pretty Club cool. Special. We're going to have all kinds of awesome stuff. But we're going to wait to podcast until around 6 p.m. Because every... NBA game that day. There you go. JD's got it for you. Every NBA game that day tips at 2.30 p.m. Central or earlier, which means all games will have been concluded, and we will get matchups, days, and times at about 6 p.m. So we're going to wait until we can announce those on the show 
whenever we do the podcast that night. So come hang out. Get yourself a burger at Spark. Uh, the whole uncontested team will be there. All five of us. So come hang out with us. Say what's up. Get some stickers. Uh, take some pictures. Chat some hoops. And then we will podcast around 6 p.m. So if you are not in OKC and you watch the podcast via the live stream, just be aware that Sunday show will not be at 9 p.m. It will be at 6 p.m. instead. It's going to be a blast. It's supposed to be a nice day. Yep. Hopefully it's not insanely windy like it has been. Um, you know, we'll yeah. see. Adio. I'm excited. Yeah. Great way to ring in the playoffs. Yes. Yes. Uh, Taylor and I will be hanging out outside before because the other three are going to the game. So Taylor and I are just going to be, you know, slamming. <laughs> slamming. The 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 yeah. Rot row. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm Focus slamming down. one down right now, boys. Yeah. Yeah. Playoff season. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Jacob's got the uh, glass bottle going. Special occasion. Yeah, classy. Yeah, okay, uh, let's talk to my diet IBC. root beer. <laughs> you guys want to talk about some basketball on this basketball podcast? Oh, yeah. Well, oh, we're yeah. playing the Spurs tonight. Uh, second night of back-to-back. Uh, the Spurs sat, uh, you know, all their good players, essentially. Not to slander Trey Jones or Zach Collins here. But uh, Thunder won 127-89 to 89 in a game that was just easy on the eyes, really <laughs> relaxing. You know, not – I don't know what, what big themes or takeaways you guys may have, but I have one takeaway exactly. On Sunday's show, I said maybe the lights are too bright for Gordon Hayward. Well, the lights were turned completely off tonight, and that man shined. Turn those lights off. <laughs> that man shined. And guess what? They turned him off, and here he is. Eight no melatonin million. tonight for Gordon Hayward? What did you say? I said no, no melatonin. melatonin tonight. No melatonin. Uh, drank a Celsius energy drink before. And uh, <laughs> those things are crazy. They are crazy. I had <laughs> 200 milligrams of caffeine. Had one earlier. Oh, it's going to He shot it. He shot the ball eight times. Six of eight. Four His of most aggressive line. game in a Thunder uniform, JD. And I don't think it's close. No. And in only 20 minutes, this is like the ideal. Gordon Hayward game. Mm -hmm. I don't know how much I should take away from it, considering he played against essentially a G League roster. The That's Austin my Spurs. only. <laughs> so I've been thinking about that, JD, because I was going to come on here and say that. Like, yeah, Gordon played good, but look at who they played against. He did get extended run. But where I'm choosing to settle at right now is, yeah, he played a shit tier basketball team. Um, Shout out to all the Spurs fans and the mentions tonight, by the way. Uh, <laughs> Wemby, Wemby Duck Chet, you don't need to say anything. Yeah. Um, it This is better than him playing a bad team and still being passive. Like, at this point, I will take what I can get, and what we got was an awesome performance. He also got the post-game interview with Nick Gallo. We got a little barking going on from one Gordon Hayward. Like, if he's feeling good, if he's the dogs are barking, then I'm feeling good. So I will take one game doing? at a time. One more time. What the dog doing? We'll take what we can get from Gordon. Tonight was a step in the right direction. Is it, oh, they played a bad team. Oh, he was just, it's a one-off. Oh, it's too small of a sample size. I don't know, but I'd rather it be a good game than a bad game against the Spurs. That's kind of where I've landed at. I think that is spot on. I made the I actually tweet out the joke that the Thunder should have sent uh, Hayward to the Blues sooner <laughs> to play in the G League because uh, this was definitely the spark that he needed. Not to uh, make a pun with our upcoming sponsor hey. and our sparks of the week that we will get into. But I think you're on to something, Jacob, in the sense that it's just nice to see him be aggressive. I think Nick put it very well in our uh, uncontested Slack where he mentioned Hayward just looked like he was playing with no pressure again like we saw back when he was playing with Charlotte. I think the last time he had more than 18 points is back in December, like mid-December for the Hornets. Um, so hopefully this is something that translates. At the same time, there's guys like uh, Aaron Wiggins, who has just been incredible over the past week, two weeks. I really hope this doesn't eat into his minutes because we see how impactful Wiggins is when he's on the floor for this team, regardless of who he's playing with. Um but hopefully this is a step in the right direction and we see him build upon this these last two games of the regular season. Totally agree. Hey, by the way, uh, Thunder just announced 
With the 127-89 win over the Spurs, the Thunder earned its 55th win of the season, becoming just the sixth team in NBA history to have two consecutive seasons where they improved by 15 plus. That's games. crazy. That's insane. They did a 15 game jump and then a 15 game jump. That's insane. Not to completely derail us yet again, but like 55 wins. I was going to bring that up. I did not know they were the 16 in NBA history to improve uh, that much in consecutive seasons. But we talked. We so always much hear about- that growth isn't linear, Taylor. Maybe it's because growth for this team is exponential. Yeah, right. It's not a linear line, just steadily. No, we hit the curve, the exponential curve, like thunder that, to the moon. <laughs> yeah, wow, it, it's pretty incredible, especially when you take into consideration. We keep talking about how tough the West is, and you have to look at these standings. Like, I can't remember who I was listening to today. I was listening to some podcast. They're mentioning the Rockets with forty wins, and how they essentially I, that was what the Thunder had last season. They made the plan. Rockets are already out of the plan. Mm-hmm. Like the West is that much more improved. It's that stack. We're still waiting to see what seating is going to look like. And here are the Thunder with 55 wins at the top of the Western Conference. Pretty incredible. Our, bu- our buddy Smoot in the chat says they'll do another 15 jump, 15 game jump again next year. <laughs> yes. Get, Get us up to, that to 70. 70 wins, baby. I love it. Um, but no, JD, I think Hayward is the story of this game. Like his jump tonight was awesome. You want to see it over the next two? Yeah. But hopefully, I, I tweeted in jest, uh, Joel Lorenzi of the Oklahoman had that sit down with him. JD was the one a little worried about some of those quotes. He came out and balled. Maybe maybe he just needed Joel to speak a little bit of truth into his ear yeah. to get him going. <laughs> that, yeah, Fire him up. Well, I love it. Were uh, pretty alarming to, to me. He, he said... Uh, Joel asked him if he thinks Charlotte, the Charlotte version of Hayward is buried underneath what we've seen so far. And Gordon Hayward replied, I would like to believe so. It's hard to say. <laughs> hard to say. Then he had a quote about like his minutes, uh, not getting nearly as many minutes and how that's so different in comparison to when he was playing with Charlotte. That was a little concerning, almost like he was voicing some frustrations. So not to just sound very cheesy here. I think there is something to be said about him being there in that post-game interview, getting the post-game interview um, after the game with the Gallo, and then all the guys coming up and barking with him. You mm-hmm. see the smile on his face. They peer pressured him into doing the bark. Like That just shows you how strong this Thunder culture is. And hopefully that also gives him a little more of a boost uh, that he's, he needs both on and off the floor. Definitely. This is one of those games where you could have like a million takeaways because the team played so well just because they beat the absolute piss out of the Spurs. Um, But I think another thing for me in this one, you would hope everyone played good and everyone did play play really well, that this is one of those kind of like find a rhythm, get right type of games that you can build on. Like, it's really nice to go out and just have a game where you execute really well, you beat the brakes off somebody, and that kind of gets you into a groove going into these last few. And we're seeing guys get into a groove. Um, Josh Giddy, we've been talking about this dude for over a month now. Isaiah Joe has found a groove. Kenny Hustle has found a groove. Um, Kaysen Wallace. And one guy that I think just hasn't been talked about enough since the trade, uh, yeah, since the trade deadline and the, the all-star, all-star break, break that I think is just becoming such an integral part to this team is Jay Will. Like, he had one, like, subpar game against the Charlotte Hornets at the end of that road trip. But besides that, he's just been really, really solid. Everybody clamored and clamored and clamored that this team needed a big. Go get a big. Go trade for Andre Drummond. Did you guys see the bullshit Andre Drummond did in that game last night? I'd watched <laughs> it, like, 12 times. It's like, so funny. That dunk. They were down seven at yeah. home. <laughs> and, uh, dude, I... I digress. Jay Will's the the backup big you've needed all along. Like he does everything this team wants to do. He is he as like tall and stocky as somebody that you'd want? No, but he's like 6'10, 260. They went out and they got Bismack Biombo, and they went out and they got Mike Muscala. Those guys don't play. And they probably shouldn't play. Like you've got no, what you shouldn't. need in Chet and Jay Will. 
And then if you want to go small, you got Kenny. Like, I think Jay Will had a great game tonight. Those back to back threes, what was that in the third quarter? Mm -hmm. um, was just awesome to see. The bench is really finding a groove, rounding into form. I think this team with Shea back healthy is really hitting a stride right at the right point. They're peaking right at the right time. It's hard not to watch the past two nights and not think like, this team's ready for the playoffs, dude. Yeah, and we this saw the, the bench struggled but before Shea's injury. Or right around that time, the bench was struggling. We had a lot of complaints about them night to night. And then SGA got hurt and was playing through that. And, and things looked... Things felt a little more rough than they have the rest of the season. And then SGA sat out. The bench started playing so well. Guys like, you know, everyone, everyone we just talked about started playing better. And now SGA is back. And we can loop, we can go ahead and loop in last night's game too. The Thunder beat the Kings 112 to 105. Since we're trying to move to other things. But SGA is now back to playing like he was for the majority yeah. of the season. Looks fresh. So you get the the bench got their time in the in the spotlight. Got to got to spread their wings, do a little more. They're looking fresh. SGA's looking fresh. And like Jacob just said, this team looks ready for the playoffs. And there's two games left. And damn, do they look good. Like, Jay, uh, Jay Dub looked, has, has looked a little rusty, but I have confidence in him. He got going in the second half in the, in the yeah. few minutes he played in the third quarter tonight. He and, was still getting to his spots, which I think is the most important thing. Even last yeah. night against the Kings, uh, the shot's not falling. And that's that's we know that's going to correct itself. Mm -hmm. I was just going to mention it wasn't even a week ago where we were all the three of us and I believe Nick or and maybe Justin as well were on the podcast and we're talking about like obviously there's so many disclaimers about Shea's injury and Dub's injury, but this team just isn't quite playing its best basketball heading into the playoffs. Here we are a week later and we're talking about these guys. Uh like you mentioned, Silva, I think big opportunity for the Josh Giddies, Isaiah Joes. I do want to get into them here in a second because I have some stats that are pretty telling. Uh, guys like that finding their groove with Shea and Dub out. Now you're bringing Shea and Dub back into the mix, and it's looking really, really promising. Jacob, you alluded to Josh Giddy Over his last 10 games, he's averaging 18 points, 8 rebounds, 7 assists. And then Gallo had a tweet about Isaiah Joe. 11 straight games with at least two made three-pointers. Finally, finally starting to find that stroke again post-All-Star break, which is huge and significant for this team. Uh, so a lot to be excited about. And then like you said, Silva, SGA. And maybe this is a good transition into Shea's game last night, the 40-point game. Comes off playing nearly 40 minutes last night and just still had his foot on the gas pedal coming out into tonight's game. Uh, just was pressuring the ball, getting stills, running in transition. Pretty great to see with this being only a second game back. It's, it's kind of crazy. I'll be honest with you. Like, I didn't... Watching him, I didn't see a visible limp, so I didn't think the quad was that bad. And I was like, our team's like kind of figuring him out, taking away what he wants to do. Is he getting gassed? And then he came back against the Kings. And I was like, oh, nope, nope. He, he just was not 100%. I mean, he just busted their ass last night. There was that play, if you guys have watched the highlights, third quarter, I believe. Um, Shea has the ball, top of the key, dribbling with the left. Chet comes up, sets the screen on the right. Shea crosses over to go around the Chet screen. They hedge it. He splits the hedge, splits the double team on the screen, takes a dribble, hits a Euro between two other guys, up, under, finish, and one. And I was just and like, one. He's insane. that is stupid. We missed that stuff for a while. Like, That's yeah. Stupid. Like it was a bunch of like just like stationary start shots and stuff from him. The stuff that he did last night and how he got to the basket and just the pressure he was able to put on them on the Kings. Incredible. And people are gonna point to that Kings game and be like, oh, you know, th they're lucky they made it out with with the win. The Kings were like ungodly hot in that first half. Like I had so many people tweeting at me last night about they, they don't want to see the Kings in the playoffs. This is what happens. <laughs> no, it's if, not. If Keon Ellis... Sabonis wasn't beating them up. Exactly. If Keon Ellis and De'Aaron Fox scoring 41 points a half is what happens, the Kings would not be in the play-in. But Jacob Malik Monk and Kevin Herter were out. Well, then Keon Ellis doesn't go crazy 
and get that opportunity. Exactly. And Jada the defense had not looks night. completely different for the Kings. I thought Chet was phenomenal in the Kings he game. He was fantastic defensively. Absolutely did not get bullied at all, which is what people have been claiming and claiming and claiming is going to happen to him. Uh, just continually proving people wrong. Uh, Shea was incredible. Josh had a really poor game. They were still able to win. Uh, Dort shot 50% from three. Joe shot 50% from three. Dort had a quiet game. Uh, or Sorry, he, he had a great game that I thought was kind of quiet, which is weird because usually when Dort has a good game, it's it's much louder than that. I thought that was good. I'm going to push back just a bit. I can't believe I'm doing this here on the podcast. Uh, what a season it's been. Full circle moment for Taylor. I didn't think Josh Giddy was necessarily bad last night. He was limited, and I saw some people – talking about this on twitter this morning about josh's uh josh you know dub and chair back and now josh doesn't have isn't getting the minutes again that wasn't the case josh had five fouls that's the reason he didn't play as much that's the reason he wasn't able to get into a groove i thought he still looked aggressive and was doing the right things i was pleased with that it was more so the foul trouble for me with josh um so that combined with again the thunder playing the austin spurs tonight there's a lot of positive things to be looking into with Josh Giddy and how he's going to fit with Shea and Dub back. I do hope we get at least like one more game where each team is healthy, like against the Bucks, for example, coming up on Friday, where we get to kind of see what that yeah. fit will look like coming into the playoffs. Honest, that ain't but gonna I, happen though, buddy. Yeah, right. Um, hey, Bobby with, P is going crazy. Silva's guy. <laughs> with, Starter Bobby P. No, no, Giannis. I don't know what the standings will look like going into that one for uh, the Bucks if they need a win or not. Um, but then with the Thunder's win tonight, um, the 4-5 matchup is locked. We will have Clippers Mavericks round three That's in the 4-5 so matchup. Fun. So there is no incentive for Dallas to push anybody, get anybody injured in that game. If their starters play, I bet it's for just a half. So I don't think you're going to see like good on good again um, or like full strength on full strength in these final two. But the Thunder have a chance to win both of them. 57 wins. And with the game that's currently going on in the NBA right now, the Minnesota Timberwolves at the Denver Nuggets, one of those teams is going to lose. Minnesota has Phoenix to close the season. Like, one seed still in play for the Thunder. Yeah, wild, wild times. Uh, I think that's it for those two games. We're gonna no. head any to any other thoughts on the Kings, real quick. Uh, it was just good to see SGA back. Honestly, like, like that's that's my big takeaway. Like he's so you forget how athletic he is. Even when he's hobbled, he's more athletic than a lot of guys in the NBA. Uh, missed watching peak SGA. That's that that was the big thing for me. Yeah, and. I just thought they came out of halftime and the level of physicality they played with was just ratcheted to a different level. I mean, they were just bulldozing dudes. I, I watched Lou Dort run down the lane, drop his shoulder, and send Harrison Barnes up to the 200 section. They like, played like that against the Kings last time also when they kind of... Uh, it was after that demons. Dallas beat, beat down they took. Yeah. 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 Um, they just played incredibly physical. The defense was absolutely clamps um i don't know what the total is that they've given up the past six quarters but it's a really small number um i'm glad good. you guys mentioned this because i loved your tweet jacob i took a screenshot of it from the uncontested account oh thank you in the second half the king scored 41 points they shot 34 percent from the floor and 34 percent from three quite a difference from that first half yes that defensive intensity was awesome then shay had a quote post game when he was being interviewed about coming out of halftime, I made a little bit of a dent at that point into that lead from the Kings, but I think they were still down like 15 or 17. Is that right? And Chase said at halftime, they just said, okay, here's our first goal coming out of halftime. We want the Kings to call a timeout first. They did that. They built off of it. And I think the I, Kings again, called just, the first three timeouts of that half. Crazy. Which is Damn. awesome. Also, Nick Crane uh, is our fact checker in real time, even though he's not on the show, telling me, there is a chance that Dallas could be playing for the four seed to get home court in the four five matchup, but the matchup is set. We won't know what they're playing for, and that will be the last game of the season. So it should be pretty clear going into that game if Dallas will be playing their guys or not. It's a wild week. It's a wild it's a, it's a wild week. The, once we're done with this, the the game that's that's on now, which I 
Do we know what the score of that game is? 32-33 currently the Nuggets are up. Wow. Also, I, I would just like to give a personal shout-out to the Phoenix Suns, whose uh, first quarter last night was, correct me if I'm wrong, was it 33-4? to four? Yeah. 10. Well, it got to 10. I thought but... I thought they only had six in the first quarter. Whatever. Yeah, uh, they are they are currently down 10-2 to two to the same team tonight. Yikes. It's a lot of heart. Showing a lot of heart hey, there. Hey, starter yeah. Russell Westbrook, baby. We are back. I think it's part that and part just... <laughs> the Suns being the Suns. The Suns, suns are just butt. Straight no butt. 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 But. 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 <laughs> All right, we're going... On that note, <laughs> we're going to take our first break of the night and then do our spark <laughs> of the week segment. Be right back. Was that spark in the sound of the bucks? Spark of the bark. Spark. Spark. Segment. <laughs> Be right back. Okay, it's time for the Spark of the Week. Spark joy at Scissortail Park's family-friendly joint, Spark. Dive into their menu of burgers, bites, and cold delights. Don't skip the must-try BLC Big League City Burger, Pink Fries, Frozen Peach Club Special, and a special Thunder Special on Sunday when, when we will be there and rotating custard flavor of the month. Located directly west of the Paycom Center, Spark is the best spot to hit before or after a Thunder game. We all know two scoops or even three scoops of custard is better than one, so be on the lookout for Spark number two and three coming to Chisholm Creek and Nichols Hills later <laughs> this spring and summer. Chat, make sure you get your Spark of the Week in. Just tag it with Spark of the Week, and we'll read some of our favorites here in just a moment. And also. Come out Sunday to Spark. Get a burger. Come on hang out. out with us. Taylor's muted. Taylor. And uh, have a great I'm time muted. Sunday. Yep. Sorry. I was muted. I was just going to say, speaking of that, Silva, in between our uh, club specials during the game, cannot wait to get some of those pink fries. Oh, dude. It's so yeah. good. I need to like set a budget for myself. <laughs> <laughs> I don't overdo it. <laughs> See, because I will. Hey, before we hit Spark real quick, you know who doesn't have a budget for one day out in Las hey, Vegas, the Premier League? I hope you jinx yourself so hard here. Oh my God. No, it's locked in, dude. I'm what? like, even if I lose these last two, it's because uh, tonight uh, was my Nick money ball. So getting my money ball, uh, I am locked in. I cannot lose. Unbelievable. The amount of Mickey Bones we're going to have to buy this man. Yeah. It, Jacob winning was my preferred outcome because Nick would have gone nuts in Vegas. <laughs> I, think. I don't know if Jacob's going to, going to be much different. I can well. Here's the thing: is like I intermittent fast, so you guys are, get out free for breakfast. There we go. Yeah, you just gotta get me a lunch, snack, lunch and dinner time, dinner, <laughs> and then that's gonna Heck be the dinner. night we're out on the strip all night. So uh, <laughs> you better expect that uh, 3 a.m. cantina. All right. Boom! I love it. Hey, I, I'm down just for the the fun night that will be. I can't wait. Right. All right. All right but make sure you get your sparks of the weekend, please, folks. Send in your sparks. I want to say my spark. It's going to be short and sweet. There's two games left. It's going to be either players sitting, players hurt. Gordon Hayward, I've cast you aside multiple times this season, but I'm bringing you back. You are the spark of the week. Score 18 points or more again in the next two games. In the next two. How many? Like Score one 18. of the two or both? One of the two. Just one of the two. Oh, okay. Give us another 18. Why not? I love it. So good not one. now. When? My spark of the week is the, the thing that has sparked this team this week is health. Shout out health. Big fan. Um, getting Shea and Dub back. They got Chet a lot of rest tonight. I uh, didn't play the whole second half. They got most of the starters a lot of rest tonight. I think health has been the spark that's going to push them to a 4-0 and week and possibly uh, up the standings and get them a higher seed headed into the playoffs. Uh, so health gets my spark. I think that is very fair. My spark of the week is not in regard to any single Thunder player. In fact, it's not even in regards to the organization itself. 
My spark of the week is the OKC fandom, Loud City. We saw what it was like. There were so many tweets and people talking about, uh, Jacob, you were there. Almost felt like a playoff environment against the Kings. Almost. It got a little rowdy. If if Josh Giddy could complete a single one, singular <laughs> lob pass, Just uh, one. that place oh, would have lost. That J Dub lob would yeah, would have they would have gone crazy. Even crazier. But there was quotes post game, or actually, I, I think it was pregame. Uh, J Dub mentioned something about the fans, uh, how awesome the OKC fans are. Obviously, he mentioned that as well with the airport greet that Jacob was at. Shea mentioned post game being back in front of the fans was something that really kind of fired him up and, and was like really uh, reviving for him. But these guys have not gotten a true taste of what Loud City really is. And that Kings game really brought back some like core memories for me. I tweeted this out. But like, you know, all three of us have been very fortunate to be at some awesome Thunder games. My favorite still is game six against the Spurs back in 2012 when they made their run to the finals. Mm -hmm. They clinched the Western Conference finals. Literally remember plugging both of my ears and still hearing everything so clearly. And then also got to go to game one in the finals. where They won that one as well. It was equally loud. I haven't seen that level of loud city since then. So I encourage every Thunder fan. This is such a fun, exciting team yet again. We are here, Thunder 2.0. We talked about the 55 wins, how crazy that is. Let's show these guys what Loud City used to be like, what Thunder Alley used to be like. Like I, I, I'm just really excited, really fired up, and think, um, think the guys will, will really appreciate it, and we can blow them away. It's a great, it's gonna be it's a great one, Taylor. It is going to be insane. I'm going Here's to be... a good be... one from uh, our fans in the chat. Yeah, you want me to read through them real quick, JD? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Ibrahim says, Spark of the Week, Isaiah Joe and Aaron Wiggins. Shout out Bench Mob. I guess I need to put these up on the screen, huh? That helped. <laughs> um, Smoot says, Spark of the Week, Dub Steps Back in Rhythm. Yeah. yeah. Dub Steps. I, hey, that's a, a longtime listener who uh, remembers a, a reference we made earlier in the season. I love it. Uh, NC says, Spark of the Week, Tayoff. Taylor's playoff beard starting. Hey, I'll do it. If you guys want me to, I will do it. Do it. Do it. NC also says his spark of, another spark of the week will be the Oos yearly 25 bomb in the last game of the season. Anyone else think this is a Nick Crane's burner YouTube? Wow, it could be NC. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, NC, Nick. if you're not Nick, but... Uh, we'll Jacob see. mentioned a different kind of bomb from Oos at the end of, of uh, Sunday's show. That's a <laughs> niche reference for those of you that <laughs> closely to our episode. We've had some fantastic uncontested moments here. Over the yeah. past George Goodwin months. says, Spark of the Week, SGA and his Cyber Truck. Now, does that mean like dope. he's afraid it's going to catch on fire? <laughs> or it's the, literally the it's spark electric, of the or week? It's an electric car, and therefore there are sparks <laughs> happening somewhere. That's a great question. Hey, speaking of Oost, though, uh, the Blue lost game one of the G League finals out in Maine, Portland, Maine. They flew home to Oklahoma City. Uh, that is why Aaron is it Aaron Flagler? Adam. Adam, Adam Flagler. That's why <laughs> Flagler played tonight. Baylor's own. He will play again tomorrow night as the Blue play game two at home. If they win game two, they will be flying back out to Portland, Maine again. Hell of a week of travel. They went OKC to Sacramento, Sacramento to Maine, Maine to Oklahoma City, Oklahoma City back to Maine, and then Maine back to Oklahoma City. Busy. It's a lot. Busy, busy, busy. Life of a uh, G-leaguer. And the life of Nick Crane, it seems. <laughs> True. That man is flying it was everywhere. I knew what? it. I know a okay. Nick when I see one. You should have known by the bad takes it was Nick. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're done with that segment. We have one more segment after this break. All right, so we've uh, been talking a bunch about the playoffs and the end of the season and, and so on and so on. So we thought it'd be fun to do a little off-season talk. What is... The Thunder's biggest off-season priority. We're just gonna talk through six or so ideas. Give them. A, I thought it'd be fun to do like a one to ten rating. One being not a priority, ten being a very high priority. 
and we'll see what the data gives us at the end. So, so we're ranking Thunder, one to ten, least important to most important. We're just, yeah, we're just gonna give it a one to ten rating, and then okay. at the end we'll see kind of where we landed and if if we actually believe that. So so this one's not on the list. We'll go ahead and give it a zero. Ooh. Uh Planning the Thunder Championship Playoff Parade. You're right. Yeah, we should probably. I'm no. <laughs> Hold off I don't that. know what you're talking about. I've already drawn up the map, Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> Shay oh, just man. double fisting uh, Dave's tenders <laughs> on the yes. route. Pink fries uh, for right. everyone. Number one for our biggest offseason priority. Extend Josh Giddy. How much a priority is that? And so we're saying this. We're not putting these in order. We're doing one through ten, right? Right. So we can yeah. have the same ratings. What? Yeah, what, right, okay. one is not a priority, like, you know, washing your jeans after one use. <laughs> I love that one. That's so and, relatable. How, how it, many how many times do you wear a pair of jeans before you wash, JD? Two. It's got to yeah, be about two. two. Three if I'm you know, having a bad week, but interesting. I think yeah. that's fair. I'm yeah. with you. What about shirts? Are shirts just a one-time use? Yeah. Then they go Unless they're sweaters or, like, vests, heavy pullovers. Those don't have to be washed every right. time. But yeah, t-shirts, yeah. socks. Every time. Oh, socks always. Yeah, underwear about you know once a month. <laughs> socks, <about> right? <laughs> <laughs> um, and you know, I had a really good one for the one rating for ten. You know, I don't, I don't know what what is ten on 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 our high priority scale. We don't need to do every every one. Ten is signing Bismack Biombo to a big deal. No, well, one's supposed not. to be the bad thing, Taylor. The thing one that's is, not oh, important. One is okay, the bad one. Thing. one. <laughs> and Ten is like, is like high priority. The highest priority. This is like calling nine one one when your dog is choking. <laughs> it's high priority. You got you gotta get some help. Yeah. Oh, specific. <laughs> All right. Okay. Go. Got it. So extend Josh Giddy. Where where are we landing here? Five is like taking the popcorn out on time. It goes like 20 seconds yeah. over here. Okay. Fair. I had a popcorn disaster last night, but that's a story <laughs> for another day. <laughs> Let's just leave that one in the air for now. Yeah. <laughs> Signing Josh Giddy to the extension. Man, I tweeted this the other night. I think that conversation this summer is going to be so fascinating because if I'm Josh Giddy's agent, I am talking with Sam Presti about numbers saying, look at what Josh did after the all-star break. Look how he performed. Look at his numbers. Look at his efficiency. Hopefully knock on wood. Look what he did in the playoffs. We need a back. And I assume Sam Presti will look at it as I've got two surefire max guys who get extended next summer in Chet and J-Dub. We've already got Shea. We've got to fill out the rest of the roster. Josh's fit isn't the cleanest fit, although he's played well. I wonder how far away those two numbers are going to be. And I wonder how Josh feels about all that. Because if the numbers are way too drastic, I think talking about a trade is not off the table. Shout out Thunder Chick. That's a good comment. <laughs> um, I, I I think a trade is not off the table. If the Thunder are thinking, hey, Josh, we want to get you um, the Lou Dort contract, where Josh is thinking, I need a max or a near max, That there's a gulf between those two numbers. And they might look to make the move, especially with now the evidence to say, hey, if you're a team that needs a lead ball handler, Look at what Josh did when Shea and Dub were out. He can like organize your team. He is a really high quality player with a ton of upside left. So I don't know about signing the extension, JD, but I think finding a resolution one way or the other, I would put this at a nine. Nine is what I had, but I originally had a similar. Well, I, originally I thought, okay, if this were extend Josh and or trade him that absolutely a nine mm -hmm. but jacob kind of persuaded me there i think it's a nine regardless first of all because both of those things are so intertwined the other being the gulf of, of potential disagreement 
that Josh's camp and the Thunder could potentially have. You want that resolve before heading into the season. We saw what Josh looked like when he had other things going on off the court, right? Obviously, two completely different situations, but also just with the team's chemistry and vibes. I'm not sure you really want that heading into the season, as well as just the whole idea of Josh being a restricted free agent if they aren't able to come to an agreement. And we know how much Sam does not like heading into those situations. I highly expect a uh, some sort of resolution to happen. Um, I'm with Jacob here. I think it's more than just extend Josh. It's coming to that resolution. Yeah. Something happens with Josh this summer, an extension or a trade, but we do not get to October and there's no extension and he's going into the final year of his contract. That will not happen. Agreed. All right. Next one. Taylor, this one's going to you. Extend other eligible role players. So I believe that's Isaiah Joe. Aaron Wiggins. Aaron Wiggins. You could say Gordon Hayward if you really want yeah. to. And just so we're clear, the Thunder will have around $40 million in cap space this summer. So this one is utilizing that cap space to, sign, to, to retain your own guys. Um, I believe Joe and Wiggins are both under contract. But the Thunder can um, make them restricted free agents and then sign them to a new deal. An extension isn't eligible for those guys. I that you could extend them, but the thing with extensions for them is I think they can only get extended for 135% of what they currently make, which for Wiggins would be like $3 million and for Joe would be four. That's not happening. It would have to be the Lou Dort situation where you make them a restricted free agent, but you've already negotiated the deal and then you sign them to the new deal. Um, so this question, I just want to make sure everyone listening, like this yeah. is the real minutia shit that we know about, but maybe a whole lot of like casual fans don't. This is this question. Silva, correct me if I'm wrong, is basically saying with that cap space this summer, they will pri the priority is to retain Aaron Wiggins, Isaiah Joe, and possibly Gordon Hayward with that money instead of doing anything else with it. Right. I think if this were any other contender, I'd give this a 10, but it's not. We're talking about the Oklahoma City Thunder, who have the plethora of draft picks and opportunities to be able to either bring in young players who can contribute immediately, hopefully, uh, given their track record of their scouting department, or trade for players of similar caliber. That being said, I still think it's high up there. Uh, originally, I was thinking like a nine. I think I'm going to give this more of an eight. Just because, like I mentioned, I think you still can, like, even if you can't get two players uh, of Joe and Wiggins caliber, maybe you're able to trade a player or two plus those picks and get one that's one player that's even better. Uh, but that being said, you have this cap space, you have this flexibility, two players who have grown up in this system and two players who really have been able to contribute at a high level. I know there's a lot of people kind of down on Joe recently. I'm still not there. I think he's been so impactful for this team, even when he's not hitting those outside shots. For all those reasons, I'm probably giving this an eight. I like that. Um, I would probably go closer to a six on this one, but I get what you're saying, Taylor. I also just want to clear some things up. There's some questions in the chat. Uh, Ibrahim says, to be clear, what is the Lou Dort situation? The Lou Dort situation was uh, Lou Dort was going into the last year of his contract. The Thunder could choose to have Lou play out the last year of his contract and then become an unrestricted free agent. Or they could opt to not pick up that last year. He goes into free agency that summer, but it's restricted, meaning the Thunder could match any offer. Um, and they decided to go the restricted route because they negotiated with Lou and had a, a deal ready to go. They said, all right, we're not picking up your option. You're a free agent. And then the next day, the, the new contract was signed. Uh, Smoot in the chat says Wiggins and Joe are both on club options. So there's team options. The team gets to choose. That is correct. But if the team keeps them around for one more year on those cheap dollar contracts, then the summer of 2025, they are unrestricted. If you decline that team option this summer, they are restricted free agents. The Thunder can match any offer sheet that is thrown at them. But the idea is you would negotiate a new deal before you didn't pick up the team option. Great clarification. Also, quickly, our guy Nick in the chat mentioned 
uh, he thinks Joe, or sorry, not not in the chat, and our uncontested Slack, our chat, mentioned he thinks Isaiah Joe gets traded. He's not the first person that's brought that up to me. That's the reason I kind of yeah. pushed back a little bit in my Isaiah. Uh, but I'd be a little surprised, but certainly as a, a trade candidate, the Thunder are able to upgrade that position. It's interesting. I didn't think about the – I haven't thought about the, the trading thing with Isaiah Joe. I thought about Giddy for so long. Isaiah Joe didn't even cross my mind on that. I mean, it, it, respect. that could all be tied together, if we're yeah. being really honest. All right, uh, next question. Got four more. Jacob, this will go to you. Get trade for a star. Ooh. So this one is difficult because of the classification of the word star. <laughs> what defines a star? So, I'm with you. I'm with you. I think 12 months ago, 18 months ago, I think the conversation was cash in the draft picks and go get like the 1A, 1B, or 2 guy on this team. This is why Sam Presti is in his role and we're the jackasses uh, podcasting from our individual houses. They have... Until Sunday. They have guy one. They have guy two. They have guy three. Hell, they might have guy four. I think if they go and they make a trade for a star this summer, JD, I think what that looks like is a lopsided trade using that cap space where they trade. Maybe it's Josh if they don't come to an agreement. Maybe it is Isaiah Joe if the number is too big. Maybe it is Wiggins and two or three draft picks. And you trade away $10 million in contracts to bring back somebody that makes $25 million. They are allowed to make a lopsided trade like that because they will be $40 million under the cap. This summer is also really the last summer they have an option to do that because moving forward, the cap sheet's going to be topped out and you will not have that wiggle room. So I think if they're going to make that move, it's not going to be for a star. They're not going and getting like an OG Ananobi or Pascal Siakam, one of these really big name guys. I think what the Thunder will be looking for, and I'm not even saying this archetype, even though this archetype might fit Oklahoma City, you're looking for your Aaron Gordon trade, right? Yeah. The guy that's miscast in his current role that fits your culture and what you need to do can come in and be like the fourth guy on the team. I think that's the trade that if they make it that they're looking for. I would put this one... I'll tell you this. I think things go one of two ways this summer. I think either A, they are doing the um, re-signing of Joe and Wiggins and Josh Giddy and maybe Gordon Hayward and just running the team back, or B, they are doing this trade. So I put those ones at a six. I will put this one also at a six because I think those are your two options, one of those two things is happening. Don't ask me who the player is. I do not know. But I think it would be something where they move a couple of these guys that are on the upward swing, uh, have a lot of value, but are cheap, plus a few picks to go get a 25, 26-year-old player who's already established, who fits in with the culture, who fits in with what they want to do, can slide right in and fill a starting role for this team. Um, but isn't a a guy that you would consider like, oh, this is the all-star they're going to get. They're not going to get the number two guy that's going to take shots away from Dub and Chet. It's just not they aren't trading for Kevin Durant. I, I had this much lower just because I took the term star so literally. I think trading okay. for an upgrade probably is up there with the six. I like that. Uh, but chat GP Nick is back at it again, <laughs> sliding in my text, sending me the definition from the NBA, of what a star is. Under current discussions among team and league personnel, a star is defined by someone who's made an all-star or all-NBA team in the past three seasons, sources said from Sean I don't, so I don't. Then I don't think they're trading for a star. Agreed. Yeah. I put that like a three. But I know a guy I like with that idea of an wild upgrade. eyes from Wisconsin that could really fill this role. <laughs> <up with Scott. laughs> uh, yeah, fun one. I figured we'd come to that conclusion uh, on this. Star, there's just no no reason, in my opinion. Um, this next one, though, it's pretty interesting. Uh, Taylor, I'll go to you. Get a backup big. 
think just off the top of my head, I'm immediately giving this one like a four. We've seen offensive rebounds be a huge issue for this Thunder team. I think that needs to be addressed. At the same time, I push back on the narrative that that has to be a true backup big, like every national NBA or NBA draft play or NBA draft a media person thinks it should be. You can address that really at any position. Um, and sometimes it's not even a position as much as it is it is a mentality or a change in game plan. Um, it needs to be addressed. I don't think that's going to come in the form of drafting Donovan Klingon trading up for him or whatever that may be or going out and getting a Nurkic or a Valachunas. I really don't. Um, I think it needs to be addressed. So I'm giving it a four, but trading for a backup big, I do not see it happening, nor do I see them drafting one either. I'm, I feel very strongly about that, but that's a uh, off season topic that I'm excited to get into. Four was high for me, Taylor. This is like a two for me. Go get a back. You got the backup big at home. His name's J will. Or Kenrich. Yeah. <laughs> Smoot is making a joke in the chat. They are not going to get Zach Eady. <laughs> I'm not happening. Cry and throw up. If they Unless he Zach. falls like in the second round. I don't think they... Honestly, I don't think they'd have much interest in Klingon either. Agreed. I've heard I've heard national podcasts be like, Zach Eady and next... Zach Eady next to Chet. What yeah. a... And Klingon. What a perfect player. I have so you know many thoughts with, there. You know what happens with Zach Eady in the NBA? He gets played off the floor because opening, he can't run Opening the floor. tip, first defensive possession. Who is Eady guarding? Come set the screen. We saw that happen in the national championship. In Absolutely yeah. left in the dirt. Yeah. All right. Next one. We can uh, go faster on these next two and we're running a little long. Uh, who just... Who just did that one? Was it Taylor? That was Taylor. Jacob, yeah. Yep. All right, Jacob. Uh, trade up in the draft. I'm always a fan of trading up in the draft. Uh, we haven't got a chance to talk about this that much recently because like, the basketball has been important, so we haven't had to talk draft picks. Uh, virtually locked into those 12th pick odds with that Clippers pick, which means there is an overwhelming... Um, uh, Odds that they are just going to get pick 12. Pick 12 has been nice to him in the past. I'd be okay with pick 12. Yeah. Um, definitely a chance to trade up. Uh, they have so many picks just floating out there. Uh, all that cap space. I said I thought one of two things was going to happen. They would either do the extensions for all the guys, for the, the Wiggins and the Joes and the Giddies and the Gordons, or they would make the trade. You know, option three, which we have like evidence of what we have the data that they've done this before is take on the bad contract to move up in the draft. I don't know which team would be motivated to do that, uh, but that option is there. I don't know like how big of a priority that is, but I can tell you they will explore options to move up in the draft. They do every single year. Um, it's all about the value play. If there's a guy they love, they will try to trade up and go get that guy. I don't know. So how much I, I would put this one at like a, a four. Yeah. As I don't far know as how like much priority things they need to do. I'd give it a four. Yeah. I don't think it's like a need, but it's something that's very likely to happen. All right. Last one. Taylor, you can send us off with a bang. This one's going to be really difficult. Use their cap space in free agency. I am going to send us off with a bang and give us our first 10 of the night. Not because I think they're going to go out in free agency and sign somebody to a $40 million contract. <laughs> but that is such a huge tool in the NBA. And Sam Presti has proven over and over again that he is so great at utilizing these opportunities. So whether it's going and maybe upgrading and trading for a bigger player that that fits into that cap space like we kind of mentioned with maybe a joe or even a giddy trade who knows or it's something as quote unquote simple not really simple but trading for a big contract and getting assets for it you have to utilize this opportunity because like jacob mentioned you're not going to get many more of these opportunities with j-dub chet and shay on this team just for a clarification jd what was the the question again Use their cap space in free agency. 
Okay, use their so that's different. Space. Sorry, I was just like, no, I was. I, I, no, Taylor, I think you hit it on the head. They're going to use yeah. their cap space, but in during the free agency period, just maybe not on a free agent. That's kind of how I took it. Now, if it was, will they sign a player with that cap space? I think Taylor's answer is probably very different, right? Correct. Yeah. Very See, well. that's what I thought it was at first, and you blew my mind with the ten because I'd give it a one. <laughs> but do, uh, utilizing that cap space, they will definitely do that. I do yeah. not see them going out and signing a free agent. Even when you look at the list, I'm looking at hoops hype, uh, top free agents of the summer of 2024. It's not great. <laughs> I'm gonna let me just go through these real quick, and you two tell me. Um, first question is, will this guy actually like be on the open market? Or is it, or is it just going to like get done with their own team, right? Number one, Tyrese Maxey. No way. No. <laughs> Number two, Paul George. No. I think there's a chance he may become available. I think there is a 0% chance he comes to Oklahoma City. Correct. Because I don't think the Thunder uh, have that interest. Three, LeBron James. No. He hitting the open market? No. He's got a player option. Even with Bronny? I don't think so. Four, Pascal Siakam. He hitting the open market? He could. He definitely could. Give it a, it'll, Oh, I, don't, I, I think it's already a foregone conclusion that he's staying in Indy. Yeah, he I'll should. Be shocked. They, they probably didn't make that trade without knowing. He would, yeah. yeah. I think this one's the same situation. Five, OG Ananobi. Correct. Yeah. Six, James Harden. <laughs> he could hit the open market, but again, not a, not a Thunder yeah. candidate. Yeah, and I just don't think the Clippers can afford to let him hit the open market. Uh, seven, DeMar DeRozan. I I do think he hits the market. Uh, I know there's Thunder fans who kind of would like to see him come off the bench. I think there's a zero percent chance that happens. Well, it, correct. Is okay, see, yeah, no, but not him hitting the open market, right? I think he, correct, correct. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, he'll definitely hit the open market. Zero percent chance he's an OKC guy. Tobias Harris is number eight. He may hit the open market as well, but I think it's very similar to DeMar. Yep. Uh. He's got to hit the open market so they have money to go spend in free agency. He an OKC guy? No. Absolutely not. No way. Uh, Drew Holiday just signed the extension. Uh, here's a name the Thunder might go fishing for. Miles Bridges. <laughs> Holy <laughs> hell. <laughs> He'll be a Laker. Uh, that wouldn't surprise me. Um, Nick Claxton. It's an interesting one. That one is a little interesting to me. Does he um, want to come off the bench? That That's the first one that kind of is interesting to me. Uh, Emmanuel, quickly, I don't think is leaving uh, Toronto. He's restricted yeah. anyways. Uh, D'Angelo Russell may leave. 0% chance for OKC. Malik Monk may leave. I think 0% chance for OKC. Bruce Brown has a team option that's like $20 million. Um, he may leave. I don't think he's an OKC guy. Nope. And he's getting the Clay Thompson, Jonas Valanciunas, Grayson Allen, uh, Buddy Heald, Contavious Caldwell Pope. I just don't see any of these guys making any sense in Oklahoma City. Not inspired by any of those. Hey, Gordon Hayward's number 23. There we go. I'll so I'm playing ticket so we can get the hell out of here. <laughs> I I do not see any of those guys being OKC targets. No. All right. Well, fun exercise, fellas. What did we learn? Learn. I'm back the... on the Hayward train, baby. Oh god! <laughs> and we learned that you guys are gonna buy, be buying me food in Vegas. Thank that you is in true. advance. I just want that. Uh, that whatever ice cream I had last time, I really just want that. It's like it was like it's like black ice cream with with stuff in it. I I need it badly, badly. It's a you. good spot. Silva, as we pump the outro music and we uh, we close out the show, are you going to tell us about the popcorn disaster? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Last night, uh, as I was preparing to watch Shogun, great show, by the way, uh, I was, wanted a snack. All we had was popcorn, but uh, all we had was the popcorn you have to, like, pop yourself. Like, only the, it's like the kernels, just the kernels in a bag. You got to put them in a pan what with oil. 1910? I know. Though my girlfriend bought them like two years ago, and we've just never used them. So, so I never got a popcorn. popcorn. Nope. Put them in the pot. Uh, put way too many, way <laughs> too many. Turn the heat up way too high. Was popping uncontrollably. Shit started to burn. I thought I didn't know if the lid was gonna blow. It was either it was gonna overflow. Uh, I started calling for help. I had to turn the burner off. 
and leave some kernels unpopped. It was a disaster. But I had the white cheddar, like popcorn uh, season. Oh, is it in the little blue container? Yeah. Oh, dude, gas. <laughs> I could just eat that shit by itself. I can't Spoonful actually. That's the insane, but do a line of that stuff. <laughs> Cinnamon challenge. <laughs> and that's my story, folks. Thanks for listening to our podcast, and thanks for being in the YouTube live stream. Uh, we'll be back Friday after the books. Books. With no Giannis. Can JD only make beef stroganoff? No. I'm a great cook. Thank you very much. Smoot. All right. See you guys Friday. Thanks for listening. Adios and thunder up.